Welcome to The View from a Pew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM. I'm your host, Reich Plekis, each and every Wednesday and Thursday from here on out on The View from a Pew.com and KTIA at 3 p.m. Join me as I present the greatest gospel artists, small groups, musicians, pastors, authors, apostles, and more, bringing to you the clear and concise word of God locally. Join me, www.theviewfromapew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM at 3 p.m. I hope you'll join me to spread the word powered by GFest and webcast1live.com. Welcome, welcome, welcome to The View from the Pew. My name is Reich Plekis. I'm your host here every Wednesday and Thursday at 3 p.m. Central Time, 4 p.m. Eastern, and I guess that would be 1 o'clock Mountain Time. Anyway, today I'm going to be speaking with the multifaceted person, the persona, the functioning in many capacities. She's a, a doctor. She's a bishop. She's a elder, a deacon, an assistant pastor, but most of all, she is Dr. K. Morris from Canada. Dr. K., how are you doing? I am blessed and highly favored, right here. I am so happy to be on your show. Thanks for having me. Amen, amen. I know you're highly favored because anybody that is is five foot six, five foot eight, I don't remember how tall, that can that can <laughs> bowl this guy over at the Stellar Awards and take a picture with him is a mighty woman of God. Amen. <laughs> Amen, amen. That that was that was amazing um, encounter. <laughs> amen. Praise God. Okay. Dr. Morris is calling us today from Canada, so if we have some reception uh, technical difficulties, we uh, apologize for those in advance. Um, Kay, you are a native of Jamaica, and were raised by two Pentecostal ministers' uh, parents, and you were exposed to the the most important, most influential. Uh, individuals that guided you on your journey through life, your spiritual faith walk, and and especially your message of music. Is that correct? Absolutely, that's correct. Uh, I'm a PK, and I've always said that I'm so happy to know that my parents really guided me and brought me up in, in those principles. Amen. Tell me, when did you move from Jamaica to Canada, and how did that happen? I moved uh, approximately 31 years ago um, to Canada. I came as a teen um, based on the invitation of one of my relatives. And so when I came to Canada, I reckon that I really liked the place, how clean it was, and how friendly the people were. And, um, you know, my, my uncle at the time uh, told me that he could let me stay here and go to school and, you know, sort of make a better life for myself. Uh, of course, I had left my part of my family back in Jamaica. So um, coming here, it was a great experience, a life-changing experience for me. And um, I never looked back. I have been back home to visit family members and stuff, but I have made Canada my home since 1980. Amen. And I... I'm, I want to ask this because you said 31 years ago, you're, you're only 36 years old, so I don't know how you could have <laughs> made such an easy transition at such a young age, but you are beautifully and wonderfully made. I have to, I have to put that out there, but you are, um, you. <laughs> you're also the president of the K Morris foundation in Canada and Ghana, West Africa. And tell me about your humanitarian work. That's what drew me to you months ago when you and I started corresponding on the on, on the Facebook. Yes, absolutely. Um, my music actually preceded me into Africa, and uh, once it got there, and there was so much request for me to actually come to the motherland, I, I eventually went in two thousand and three, and upon arriving there, I saw the plight of the people. I, I recognized that there were people there dying from AIDS at the time. HIV and AIDS was ravaging um, sub-Saharan Africa. And uh, the rates were very high. People were dying. Orphans were dying. You know, many people were just dying, both men, women, and children. And I thought to myself, I have to be one of those people to make a difference. Uh, coming out of a first world country where we have all the necessities of life, everything we needed, we had access to it firsthand, um, medicines, etc. 
And so I decided to come back to Canada, driven with a passion to make a change, to be that difference, to make be a part of the solution to that issue. And so I started the K-Morris Foundation in 2003 and did my first mission in 2004. And it's been over 10 years. We have not looked back. We have been, um, you know, recognized by uh, so many UN agencies for participating and helping to alleviate poverty, um, bringing down the ratio of HIV and AIDS. And now one of our biggest uh, platforms is the maternal health um, platform where we're spearheading this maternal health uh, facility to help women that are dying from giving birth to children. Uh, we believe that no woman or, you know, no woman should die in this 21st century while giving birth to another human being. So uh, these are some of the things and the causes that I have been advocating for um, and towards. Also, uh, malaria is one of the highest um, killing, you know, things in, in, in West Africa. Not so much the AIDS. The AIDS is more predominant in East Africa. But we, we are covering all the bases. And so these are all the areas and the issues that we're, we're working on. Hallelujah. I tell you, you know, God has, has truly called you not only back to that nation, but to other nations. I've been following you musically, and your audiences alone uh, allow you to demonstrate your versatility in offering um, a godly perspective in a variety of musical styles. There's not many people that can cross culture, cross uh, musical styles, especially in ministry, Nowadays, they're yeah. either, you know, CCM, contemporary Christian music, or their gospel, or their rip, hip hop, or rap. Um, but you have taken, you've really blazed a, a trail in, uh, well, your your biography says, uh, Voice of the Voice, Voice of the Voiceless for Orphans and People Living with HIV, AIDS, and Malaria in Africa. Um, you know, two months ago, we had a, a boy, Isaiah Newsom, and his mother on the show. And Isaiah is 16 years old, and he's fighting a very severe form of sickle cell anemia, Dr. Morris. Right. And he has actually missed half of his entire life of school by being sick or ill or in hospitals. And this year, when Isaiah turned 16, he decided, much like you, to say enough is enough. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to do what, what the gospel says. I'm going to go forth to the nations. I'm going to start here at home outside the four walls of my church. And he he created a blood drive, and not just for a blood source for him, but it, it is in his name, but for other people suffering of sickle cell anemia as well. And that's what drew me to your biography is is the, the likenesses that God brings people together. Amen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely, and, that, and that's what I believe. I believe in, in empowering the body of Christ and um, allowing people to know that, you know, while we are here, we are to emulate the lifestyle of Jesus Christ, because this is exactly what he did and would do, um, you know, and with the little that we have, we have to share it. We have to make it available to others, not just for ourselves. But we have to be selfless in this walk, in this Christian walk. And so this is where my passion comes, where, you know, by I look at myself and I spend money out of my own pocket to facilitate some of these meds and to facilitate some of these, these um, mission trips. And they're very, very costly and very expensive. To go into some of these African countries, it could cost up to $3,000 just for one flight, not including hotel accommodation or even meals. But, you know, I have to say to God be the glory, um, he has given provision for the vision. And so uh, I'm able to do what he has chosen me to do and what he's commissioned me to do, because I believe that this is also a big part of the Great Commission. Amen. You you not only uh, um, are a woman of God, but you are a, a minister as well, correct? Yes, I am. I'm an assistant pastor at my church. Have you seen a difference in the style of worship in in Africa or Nigeria versus that in, I know you've traveled America, um, but also Canada? Do you see more of a, a spiritual breakthrough, a tearing down of the strongholds in, in more um, uh, 
countries that are, I don't want to say destitute, but they are destitute, unfortunately. But uh, mm-hmm. third world countries, do you see more breakthroughs um, coming through because of the, the fact that they are so easy to, to submit to Christ and to Christ's healing? Yes, I, I have to say yes. Um, I, I, you hit on Nigeria. I was in Nigeria um, many years ago, and one of the things that really, really appalled me is the way how they worship. Um, the Nigerians took me to church in the morning, and I never went back to my hotel until late at night. And we spent the whole day at church, and it was all worship. We broke for a, a little time to eat and to fellowship, but most, for the most part, it was straight worship. Worship, 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 and people were slain in the spirit. People were delivered from, uh, you know, demonic spirits, and, you know, it was just worship. They dance a lot. And I, I said to myself, this must be where David came from, because they dance, uh, the Davidic dance. You know, it's like n- nothing that I've ever seen before. You go into Ghana, you go into other parts of Africa, Uganda, and people are just worshiping. They may not be under a major um, facility or a stained glass window church. Uh, they could be under just a tent with maybe thousands of people under that tent or in an open field. But when they come to worship, it's worship. I had the privilege of also speaking at, at one of the conferences. I was one of the main speakers. And I'm telling you, people came out night after night after night, and they were just so hungry and thirsty for God. And, and, and they were all into the worship, all full participation in worship. Do you, do you believe that revival is going to break out in our land here? I strongly believe, I strongly believe that a revival is on the horizon. A revival is on the horizon. And we just got to keep on pressing and pushing the word of God in whatever way we can, whatever platform that we, we get. We need to raise our voices and, and speak, thus said the Lord, because we are the voice of God in the earth. And if we open our mouths and tell the world what does set the Lord, I believe there's nothing else that can happen but revival. Because the people's hearts are ready. I believe the soil is ready. Everyone is ready for revival. Amen. We are speaking with Dr. and Pastor Kay Morris from Canada today. And I tell you, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns that you want to ask her, um, we're going to highlight some of her music here later on in the show. We're getting ready to take a station break here in about two minutes, uh, Dr. Morris. But um, yes. people people can find you um, on your website. And your website, if you would give that to us, is www.kmorris.org. kmorrismusic.com. Uh, kmorrismusic.com. Yeah, K-A-Y-M-O-R-R-I-S music.com. And for my foundation, it is www.kmorrisfoundation.com. So if you have any questions, um, we, we would like to take your call at 855-244-007 here at The View from the Pew. And Bob is in the studio, and I'm still out again today. But we're going to take your questions for Dr. Morris um, as we come back from the break and also featuring some of her music. Dr. Morris, you you have many, many different um, a- avenues, uh, facets of music, genres of music that you're putting out. And um, it, just a quick question before we go to break. Are you finding it relatively easy for people to receive you and the genre of music that you're bringing across because of the diversity, the the cultural and ethnicity differences that you bear? Well, it has been very easy for me, and I believe that the Bible says the anointing destroys the yoke. And the, the difference with my music is that it's not just, I'm not just singing reggae style gospel music but it comes with the anointing. And when I go up and I start ministering, the anointing takes over and the anointing destroys you. So I must say to God be the glory, I have been able to go into so many different countries from Asia to Europe, uh, Africa, uh, North, and, uh, North America, uh, South America, and all, you know, the Caribbean, where most people already know of me. There's the music. We're getting ready to take a break here. I tell you what, you're not going to want to change the channel at all. Stay tuned for Dr. K. Morris, Pastor K. Morris, right here at the View from the Pew with Right Click at 99.3 KPIA FM. Don't 
tune in, turn on, and turn it up and see the same. We'll be right back after this. obey the power of sin, it leads to death. If you choose to obey obedience, it leads to righteousness. Forgiveness is just the beginning of life in Christ. God wants us to live for Him now. And because of Jesus Christ, the gospel was preached, and you and I are blessed today because of Abraham. Did you know that? We're blessed. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. All across America, there are countless numbers of people struggling with addiction and other life-controlling issues. Probably someone you know and love. There is a way out. There is hope. Transformations Treatment Center in Delray Beach, Florida, has a unique approach to substance abuse treatment. Call now and ask about our guaranteed success program or log on to transformationstreatment.com. Transformations. Change your life. Change your relationships transform your world yes now your favorite programs on webcast one live can all be watched and listened to on any android or apple device your phone tablet or ipad yes your favorite shows on webcast one live are available live or on podcast wherever you go let me introduce to you some of our great shows Shalom. Every week on Understanding the World with Rabbi David Kaufman, we'll talk about issues in the Middle East, issues related to the Jewish tradition and religious traditions in general, and keep you up to date on exactly what's going on around the world. You may know some of the story, but you haven't heard all of the story until you've heard it on Understanding the World with Rabbi David Kaufman and our special guests we have on every week. Like, right now. Did you feel anything? Yeah. You did? I was dealing with some back issues um, due to the depression that I did, and right now they're gone. I have a sickness called Lyme disease. It was really bad, and I could have died up of it, but um, God healed me of it. <laughs> So when you want to watch your favorite Webcast One program, remember, there's an app for that. You know, there's an app for that. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. We are back here at the View from the Pew with my guest, Dr. and Pastor Kay Morris, all the way from Canada. And that was just a, a feature of some of her music that she has put out. And we welcome her back to the show here at 99.3 KTIA FM and the View from the Pew with Mike Plekis and Bob Montserrat. Uh, uh, Pastor Morris, that song right there, if you could tell us about that, that particular um, piece that you wrote. Uh, are you referring to the um, Letters of Love song? Yes. Oh, the Letters of Love song, uh, I wrote um, based on my experiences, uh, you know, traveling into various parts of the continent uh, and, you know, sharing with the youth, sharing with the children, uh, sharing with uh, humanity on a whole. Um, it, it's based also on the biblical principles of Christ, how he told us to live. Uh, among, you know, our neighbors, we should be a brother's keepers. So basically, I'm saying that we should show uh, show love, how we live, by giving, by, you know, showing each other how we care. 
it's not just about us, but when we raise our hands or we lift our hands to give someone a glass of water or something to eat, you know, we are doing it as unto Christ because he said, as much as you do it unto one of these, you have done it unto me. So it's really uh, telling the world that love really heals. Love is, is the answer, you know, and I believe this song has really gotten to some very, very serious levels and has gotten a lot of reviews, great reviews around the world. Uh, to God be the glory. Okay, and I'm going to apologize during that. When when uh, we had that song cued, actually the website, we accidentally opened the website at the same time. So we're going to play a little bit of the segment of that again uh, before we go to our next break so people can hear it more clearly and concisely. With with um, that being said, uh, you're, in your, your travels, you um, have also uh, ministered Quite, quite frequently as an international independent artist um, in alternative Christian gospel uh, musical events, the Praise Factor Awards, um, uh, Rhythm of Gospel. Uh, I know that you're up for several Rhythm of Gospel Awards, such as I am for a talk show host of the year. In, in your, your walks in those different musical groups, um, do you look at it as a, a competitive nature, or are you still looking at it as a ministerial outreach? Oh, no. Uh, for me, I am not one for competition in that sense of the word, um, because I believe that there is competition, but it's competition where we're competing, um, you know, for a prize, basically. When you look at the rhythm of gospel, uh, there's several nominees. And on that level, uh, and that, and, on that level and in that sense of the word, it's a competition. But to look at another person to say, I'm competing against you to be better than you or to elevate myself better than you, no, I don't play that at all because I think that's against the, the principles of Christ. Because, you know, the Bible says each one of us should really um, elevate another person, or honor another person better than themselves. So for me, I'm more of one to help, uh, to bring out the best in another artist or in another human being or to uplift to strengthen. I believe that's what the body of Christ should be. Uh, and so for me, it's an evangelism tool. My ministry is to evangelize, uh, to win souls. Uh, the Bible says he that winneth souls is wise. It's to bring people to Christ, not really to draw them to me per se, but that what I'm doing, you know, the lifestyle that I live, you know, it will be a reflection of God's glory. God will get the glory out of everything that I do. It's to unite. It's one of unity, unification. Amen. And I know that you've been able to capture the attention of, of many, many dignitaries, kings and queens, prime ministers, and so on and so forth, but as well, um, uh, actresses, actors, celebrities. Uh, some of them were um, uh, Gloria Vanderbilt, uh, Cheryl uh, Lee Ralph, um, uh, Dr. Rubin um, Carter, um, Bobby Jones, Carlton Pearson, uh, Kirk Franklin, Donnie McCurk, and some of the, the greats um, that you have act actually got to either perform with or minister to. Um, with that being said, is there an openness, is there a friendliness for them to, to reach out and embrace you and bring you in and, and, and uh, see that we're all in this fight together? Absolutely. Uh, whichever way or however God had those doors open for me, um, I would have to say it was all for his glory. Um, I remember when I met uh, Gloria Vanderbilt, it was, it was an event that I was invited to to come and um, perform. And, uh, you know, when I met her, she was so warm, friendly, and, you know, down to earth. I, I couldn't believe it. This woman that is such an icon, I, I just couldn't believe it. Um, but, you know, I am very, very humbled by these experiences because I believe it helps me to grow not just as a person, but as an artist, as a minister. Uh, these things uh, allow me to grow because when I, I meet great people, it tells me also that I too can be great. You know, I may not be at their level, but I'm aspiring to be, you know, uh, who God really desire and wishes for me to be in him. All for his glory. I noticed that on several different occasions, you have been the recipient of a very prestigious recognition uh, um, from the St. Jude's Children's Hospital there in New York. And can you talk briefly about what you've done with and for St. Jude's Research Hospitals? 
Uh, I was um, instrumental in helping to raise funds for their cancer research center uh, in New York. And um, I was even surprised to receive that, uh, you know, acknowledgement from, from St. Jude's Hospital. But, you know, when I do things like that, I don't do it with an intention that, yes, I'm going to get an award for it. I just go out and selfishly do things. If someone calls me and say, I'm doing this, uh, would you be able to assist me with it? I just selflessly go uh, with no hidden agenda and just say, this is what I like to do. I like to help people. I like to make sure that people are getting, you know, um, the medicines that they need or getting the food that they need to survive. It's all about life-saving initiatives that's going to allow people to live longer lives, healthier lives, and, um, you know, prolonging longevity. Well, St. Jude's is such a, a ministry in itself. You know, their, their claim to fame is really that anybody who comes to St. Jude's will never have a bill to pay. And that's such a, a prestigious honor to receive from them and, and a level of influence that they've recognized you, not only for your humanitarian work, but also your, your financial contributions uh, to their ministry at St. Jude's. Um, with that being said, did you choose St. Jude's because you knew of somebody that had been inflicted with cancer? Or what, what was the reasoning behind that particular research hospital? Um, I was, um, they, the, someone in New York had sought after me uh, to come and participate in this initiative. So I flew from Canada directly to New York to be a part of that initiative. And so um, when I was asked, I willingly went. And, you know, it's not like I went searching them out uh, or looking for a particular institution. Um, because I'm very much open to uh, partnering or working with forming alliance with any uh, institution that is doing work that will be saving the lives of humanity. All right. A quick question here, and this is from me. Um, you were interviewed by Fox TV in Dubai, correct? Yes. Tell me, and this this may be my my Midwest uh, stupidity, but generally, women in Dubai are they not to be heard? That they are to be seen and not heard? Well, it, the interview did not happen in Dubai. Uh, the media was from there, but they were in South Africa, where I was at the time um, during the FIFA World Cup Games um, in 2010. Uh, my foundation was instrumental in. Um, partnering with the FIFA uh, Dribble, to, Dribble to Africa World Cup initiative, where we went and fed uh, the children that were homeless. Uh, we had them in a camp. Uh, I think it probably was about three to 400 children in an open camp in, in, in Cape Town. And my foundation, we brought food in, and we brought, brought clothing in, and we actually um, did that work in, in, in Cape Town. So it was while I was down in Cape Town, uh, they um, spotted me and interviewed me on the spot. And I thought, wow, that was kind of a one-off, you know, but I was interviewed by them in South Africa. Wow, what a, what a recognition. We are speaking with Dr. and Pastor Kay Morris. I tell you, anybody who wants to bring an influence of a multitude of musical genres in the gospel arena needs to contact Kay Morris at www.kmorrismusic.com. That's www.kmorrismusic.com. And we're going to get ready for another break here in about four minutes. But I tell you, this, this, this woman of God's biography, her resume, her dossier, is 16 pages longer than my credit report. <laughs> and I tell you, it, it is, she is such a humbled woman of God, that um, it's truly not screaming of accolades, but it is truly stating what God has, has lifted her to a platform to accomplish and to de demonstrate her versatility by offering a fresh perspective in a variety of musical styles that minister to the multitude. Is that correct? Amen. That's, uh, that is correct, yes. Amen. And I tell you, you, you want to reach out to her for your, your women's retreats, your women's conferences, your, your any conferences, any musical events that you have by finding her at www.kmorrismusic.com. 
How long have you been ministering in, in gospel music? I would have to say um, more than uh, 25 years, approximately 25 years to take it seriously. Um, I've been singing all of my life. However, um, as I said, growing up as a PK, I started singing at the tender age of four. Um, but at the time, I, I would have to say that, you know, I did not really know God for myself. I didn't have that one-on-one -on -one experience with Christ as I should have uh, growing up as a teen in Jamaica. And, and so uh, coming to Canada, migrating here, um, you know, I, I had some eye-openers that really allowed me to really realize and recognize that I couldn't just be working off my parents' experience knowing God. I needed to know him for myself. I needed to have a close relationship with Christ. And so it wasn't until, um, I think it was 1998 or 1995, I should say, I'm sorry, 1995, when I uh, actually took this seriously and, and started to do some serious work. And the anointing just took over from there, uh, the rest of history. My goodness. In, in your, your walk, and I, ha I want to be careful how I phrase this, not, it's not to offend, but to state revival. Revival. Is revival, revival starting here with Kay Morris and, and going out into the land? Stay tuned. We're going to come back on that statement right after the station break. I think we're about ready to have some church with Dr. and Pastor Kay Morris of Canada. We're here at 99.3 KTIA, The View from the View with Wright Clark and Bob Montserrat. Bob, we hope to hear from you. How's this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. Tune in, turn on, and turn it up. We'll be right back after this. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. Oh, I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I'm administrative manager. I'm the senior technician. I'm Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're gonna do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do, and if we guarantee it's gonna be a good experience for you, or else it's free. What type of work do you think we're going to do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we'd fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you going to say that to a client? No. <laughs> You don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're gonna be listening. They're gonna wanna know what your challenges are. Then they're gonna come and give you options and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family. You know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now and then leave and then come back, charge you again, and, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed the day. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me. But is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did was perfect. It was great. <laughs> 
Keep going though, I like this. <laughs> Just give us a try. I'm gonna take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, fixed writer, it's free or 100% money back. Not said. KTIA FM on the View from the Field with Reich Plekis and Bob Monstrop. Bob, I know that you have a, a, a plethora of questions that you want to ask because you're smarter than I. Well, questions, yes. Smarter, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a question about, uh, this is the K, about the foundation. And I guess my question has to do with, um, is it... Getting into places like you do in Africa, um, is is the fact that you are a minister a problem reaching out? Is there a problem or a conflict with the government for you to go in there and offer assistance to people? No, um, no, not at all. I haven't had any encounters uh, that is negative or has been negative in that sense of the word. Um, the fact that I, I go in as an NGO, a nonprofit organization, and I do have people on the ground who are working as part of my organization. And so whatever we need to do, like if we're bringing in medicines, for example, we have to go to the government to get a clearance certificate, um, you know, to bring those medicines in. If we don't get that done prior, then we are going to encounter some problems. And I think sometimes the reason why uh, some other charities may have issues is because they don't do the groundwork, they don't do the homework. It has to be done. All of these things have to be done and properly facilitated before you leave uh, the country to arrive there. So for the most part, we have been welcomed by governments. We have never had any issues, and they have reached out to us to come back and do more work. Is there a problem with the government as far as sharing the gospel while you're there assisting and helping people? I have never had any encounters um, in a negative way. Uh, I was in Uganda last August speaking at a major conference and um, also empowering women and children. I, I had no issues at all. I was free to preach the gospel. I was free to, to get around. And, uh, you know, no issues. I do the same thing wherever I go in the continent. I know there's some places um, that are more uh, Muslim strongholds, um, if you will. We, we have not had any issues there either because when we go, we go with ministers who have already, um, you know, got their feet on the ground. They have a footing there. They have people that they know. And so I don't go alone. I go with people that are able to facilitate me. That's very good. I, uh, the other thing I was wondering is, um, do you feel or does your foundation feel it's important to take care of basic needs of the people before uh, sharing the gospel, or is it something that goes hand-in-hand hand together at the same time? For me, it's, uh, it goes hand-in-hand. Hand. It depends on the situation. Um, you know, there's some places that I go where it's just strictly for that. For example, if I go into a facility where you have people from different ethnic backgrounds or different ethnic groups, uh, it doesn't matter what that ethnic group is, I still have
have to give them medicines because they are in need of it. So I cannot give it based on their religious beliefs or uh, whatever. I still have to give it to them. And when they see that I give it to them, uh, they listen to what I have to say. I have been able to minister to them in songs. If I can't speak, then I sing. And I believe when I sing, it's singing about God, singing about, you know, Christ, the life, you know, the life of Jesus, singing about love, unity, and peace. And so that's generally the message that I like to share with them. And I, I have been always well received by these groups. Well, that's very good. And that's awesome because I know that when people are hurting and suffering, um, you really, it's really important to take care of those basic needs, like you, you mentioned, as far as the foundation is concerned. That's critical uh, to deal with uh, food, shelter, med- medicine to help them. But again, on the other hand, uh, in addition to that, obviously, uh, the gospel, prayer, and so forth for illness, sickness, and so forth is uh, another awesome thing uh, that I'm assuming you're doing, too. Amen. Yes, absolutely. Uh, whenever I go into a country, I always look for an opportunity to, to minister the gospel. And so, uh, for me, it's not just the one fold, but it's, it's almost like a threefold thing or sometimes a fourfold, is I end up going into camps where I'm teaching. Uh, I, I am empowering women. You know, I go into schools and hand out books, computers. You know, I also looking at the, the literacy of the children from elementary uh, age, uh, because if they're not taught, you know, they're not able to carry on for the next generation. They will not be uh, able to, to move forward with the gospel. So we're preparing generation next. Uh, to be able to to speak the gospel and to teach the gospel and to preach the gospel. Mm-hmm. Do you try to get to um, Africa on a, a routine basis, or how how is it that you uh, get a chance to visit uh, the country to uh, see the people and see the people that are uh, working in your foundation? Well, as uh, I have been traveling for so many years, word get out, you know, about my organization. And so every year I have X amount of invitations to different countries. And um, basically what I have to do is to do a needs assessment on the ground to see what it is exactly that they're looking for in terms of needs, uh, you know, the basic human needs, the necessities that they need. And once I'm able to determine that and also to find out what the uh, uh, restrictions are in terms of bringing in certain items, Speaking to people at the government level to find out how uh, it would, you know, how how it would be for me to actually come into this country. What it would it take? What do I need to do? What are the channels that I need to to go through? And once I have all of those barriers broken down, you know, then I will decide if I was in West Africa last year, I'll probably try to go to another place in Central Africa. And so I keep going to different places in Africa. Uh, some have gone to more than once. Uh, because it, the need's very great. So, you know, you can't do it in one mission. You have to do it in several different missions. Oh, um, yeah. You know, and, it's yeah, a and huge, huge, that. huge country. It's, it's a, a huge, huge country. country. Very huge, very huge. And so, uh, and when you go, you find out that there's a need here that you didn't hear about before. So, you know, you come back with a whole lot of different additional needs that you still need to work on for yet another mission. So, you know, there's always some place to go, and it also could be South America. Been into Guyana, uh, you know, not just to minister in singing and in preaching, but also to uh, do the same with uh, some of the orphanages there and uh, in the Caribbean as well. Do you have a group of intercessors that are constantly in prayer uh, for you during this time and, and your people? Yes, I do have a lot of... Um, Support. I have a, a prayer support team, um, and they are based in Ghana. And we have some people here also in, in, in Canada and in the Caribbean. There are people scattered all over the world that are basically praying for me and praying with me on a daily basis. Um, some of them, uh, they do it through, uh, you know, the Facebook, social media. The prayer comes through, uh, you know, the, the Facebook or in, term, in, in the form of an email or it could be by telephone, you know, but they find a way for us to pray and, and to connect. Well, it sounds like you have an awful lot of energy to be able to do the foundation and do your music, and uh, uh, do you ever have time to get some rest and sleep? 
Absolutely. <laughs> That's my time. <laughs> Bob, she's only five foot two, five foot six. This woman is a ball of energy. <laughs> we are we're speaking with Pastor and Dr. Kay Morris from Canada on the View from the Pew on 99.3 KTIA right here today. If you have any questions, call us at 855 244 0077. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back after this. Let me let you in on a little secret. You ready? Always try to do business with people, not places. Especially if you seek honest Christian business people. And when it comes to my car, I really need to trust who's working on it. Now, my family is so blessed. A few years ago, we found a family-owned automobile repair shop that operates as a Christian business also. Open, honest, reliable, trustworthy. It's Amco on Hickman Road in front of Kmart, and it's a family-owned Christian operating business. This family treats your car as if it was their car, everything from oil changes to transmission repair and everything in between. So the next time you feel the need to be at peace with your choice of who you can trust with your car, give Amco on Hickman a chance to serve you and tell them Max sent you. All across America, there are countless numbers of people struggling with addiction and other life-controlling issues. Probably someone you know and love. There is a way out. There is hope. Transformations Treatment Center in Delray Beach, Florida has a unique approach to substance abuse treatment. Call now and ask about our guaranteed success program or log on to transformationstreatment.com. Transformations. Change your life. Change your relationships transform your world. If Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of America was your personal webmaster, Tom would filter out all bad debt emails. If Tom was your mailman, you'd never get any debt reduction junk mail. If Tom Coates was a lineman, he'd block any phone calls offering to reduce your credit card debt. Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America, and we're still your best choice for credit counseling. We're local, we're accountable, and we can do more. You make the call when the time's right for you. When it comes to competition, there really is none for Consumer Credit of America. We are back with Pastor and Dr. K. Morris from www.kmorrismusic.com. Uh, that piece, of, that selection there was called Save the Children. And uh, uh, Pastor Morris, can you tell us about that particular piece? That particular piece um, was uh, done. It's a collaboration that I did with the God's Glory Children. They're all orphans out of Uganda, from Bali, Uganda. And um, when you see those children you would not believe that they're living in such impoverished uh, situations. But um, they're so happy and they're so excited about the Lord. They love the Lord. And, you know, I am just one of those people that the Lord raised up to work with these children. And I did the collaboration, uh, co-wrote, um, you know, a verse of that song. And uh, he just did a video, which is uh, posted now on YouTube. And, you know, it's such an awesome awesome experience and the message is very powerful uh you know seeing how these children have to labor to help their own siblings children that are very young working hard to help their own siblings and uh, you know i'm very happy that god chose me to work with them um bob i i know that uh during the break there you said right don't get me started so you're on your preach bob uh did you have anything else before we we break out of here in six minutes yeah, I'm curious as to uh, how cold it is up there in Canada because uh, it's 39 here now. We're ha- we're having a heat wave. 
sorry, nine. Oh my God. <laughs> we, That's Fahrenheit. We were just minus twenty. We were we were on the minus twenty recently, but today it's not too bad. I think we're about uh, minus five or so. But we're still cold. It's very cold over here right now. Well, yeah, anytime you want to warm up, you know, you can come to Iowa. Uh, Iowa, wow, definitely. I would, I would definitely take you up on that invitation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think it's an awesome thing that you're doing. And um, and I've, I've been on mission trips in the past. Is that something um, that y- your foundation does? Do uh, church fellowships bring people, or do they go down and try to work with the under your foundation umbrella? Oh, definitely. If um, you know, I have been instrumental in helping other uh, missionaries who have aspired to go to Africa or elsewhere um, to go on their own missions. You know, just set up uh, the whole system for them. Once they arrive, they would be met by the people. Uh, would assist them, you know, to carry out their missions. But for the most part, yeah, I have brought people alongside uh, my organization who wish to come and share and to be a part of what I am doing. And uh, I've always encouraged people, you know, if they want to come with me, uh, they're more than welcome to come. And, you know, like I said before, it, it is it is very costly to do what I do. And so I use my ministry of singing um, to raise funds, the needed funds, and also try to, you know, go to ministries, other ministries to ask for their support. So, you know, I'm always here, you know, for whatever is, is open to me in terms of um, financial support or even with the, the, the actual items, you know, uh, you know, donated items or in-kind items, as we call it. Uh, if there's anything, books, you know, school supplies, clothing, that are in good condition, um, you know, whatever it is, they're always unwilling to accept the, 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 the um, support for this initiative. Mm-hmm. So many of the people that are uh, that work uh, under your umbrella of the foundation are natives from Africa and from the individual countries in Africa then? Yes, most of them. Um, I do have people who are on my board or members of the organization outside the board uh, here in Canada. You know, they help the groundwork here, mm-hmm. um, you know, in terms of keeping things um, together. Uh, but on the ground, we always need to have people that are native. Because they know the land. It's their land. It's their country. Uh, they know the government. They, if I need to go in, they are the ones who can be taking me in anyway. So uh, it's always good to form alliance with other groups that are doing great things and groups that are recognized at the government level, um, you know, are people who are in good standing, churches as well. Because the churches uh, usually have a great base. Once I'm finished ministering with the, the, the young people or with the orphans, then I always go to the church and, and see what those needs are there as well and, you know, empower them. Yeah, that sounds like, um, wow, it, it sounds like a lot of, people are involved. It sounds like a lot of work to, to get everything, uh, organized, everything, uh, made legal with, between countries. And, uh, it's, it sounds overwhelming to me, but, uh, you've got it all down pretty well. <laughs> to God be the glory. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Quick question here. Um, uh, pastor K if you were to grab the attention of the U.S. Congress or our president, and you could ask any question or influence them in any way, what would be the, the redefining or the defining word, the deposit that you would want to leave with them? Well, uh, if I were to get to that level, I would definitely want them to do something, uh, you know, to bring the children out of Africa, out of this poverty. You know, we have the UN MDGs that says we should end poverty by 2015. But at this point, when looking at it, it's not very achievable by 2015. So I think the U.S. could do more, you know, towards uh, achieving that goal. I'd I'd speak to Mr. Obama about that. I tell you, um, each day is a new day, uh, Pastor Morris, Pastor K, Dr. K. Um, 
all I have to say is get ready, get ready, get ready. I'm so delighted to, to call you friend and sister. I look forward to meeting you in July in Birmingham, Alabama, win, lose, or draw, but uh, more so just <laughs> humbly to give you a big old hug again and say, I am so glad that we are in this together. Um, I am Thank I'm you. delighted that I got to meet you in Nashville and just to see the wonders uh, that God is doing in and through you. I accept my friend and also you, uh, Beth Blessman and Dr. Blessman from Des Moines, Iowa, a message on Facebook. They have outreach ministries to Africa, and you need to hook up with them. They are a blessing just like you. Will you come back okay. and be on the show again sometime? Oh, absolutely. Just let me know when, and I'm always ready to come back on your show. I really enjoy Great. being on your show. Praise God. Thank well, you I tell so you what, everybody needs to check her out at www.kmorrismusic.com or www.kmorrisfoundation. Is that .org or .com? Thank you so much, Rice. Yeah, I think it's actually k kmorrisfoundation.com or .org. Anyway, look her up. It's been a blessing, uh, Dr. K. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. 